Why did Profiles in Poise start up, and why haven't I done one in quite some time? It's a good question. Let's dive into it, shall we? Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, uh, I wanted to talk about a feature that I've had on my channel that I may have again someday, but why it kind of fell into disuse. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lay Machinsky, and Becca Beckonen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. So the COVID numbers for Montgomery County in Maryland, where I live, um, have dropped dramatically in the past couple weeks. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to go for a little bit of a walk sans mask and uh, chat with you all about this. Yeah. So profiles and poi. For a long time, it was one of, if not the most popular feature that I had on my YouTube channel. It featured interviews with people that had had a big impact on the world of poi. Um, talking about the history of their careers, major inflection points in them, and the choices that they made at those different inflection points and why. Um, and I, I haven't done one of those interviews in quite some time, um, and I kind of wanted to talk about why that was. So like, originally, Profiles in Poi kind of happened on a lark. Um, the first Profiles in Poi interview was with my friend Keith Marshall, who was touring through the United States back in, I think it was 2013. Um, so, like most people, uh, my introduction to Keith was through his video Antiphone, um, which another friend MCP shot of him, and uh, it was kind of fascinating meeting him because from his video, I assumed that he was going to be this really, really kind of rough and burly biker type. You know, he had those big long red dreads and uh, he always seemed to be wearing a scowl whenever you saw him in a video. And much to my surprise, Keith turned out to be one of the sweetest human beings that I have ever met in my life. Um, he and I got to be really, really close friends. He came and stayed with me for a little while in DC and we got to know each other really, really well. Um, I'd venture to say probably we got to know each other better than most people in the flow arts have ever gotten to know either one of us individually. And there was a part of me that kind of wanted to like show people this other side of Keith, you know? Not the like, you know, big burly biker type with the scowl on his face, but this really, really sweet dude who had this like adorably high squeaky voice and had really, really thoughtful things to say about how we practice and why he does the things that he does. So at Flame Festival that year, I sat down and I interviewed him. Um, and, you know, just because I was doing it at the time, my friend Teddy Petrosky was also at Flame, and I sat down and talked to him too. And so those two interviews became the first of what turned out to be a series that I did for several years to come afterwards. Um, mainly, it came about because once I had told Keith's story and shared with the broader world, um, what an interesting person he turned out to be, I realized there were a lot of other interesting stories to be told out there, and especially because we are notoriously a subculture that is terrible about writing down our history, I thought that this could serve a useful purpose in, you know, kind of laying down the who's and what's and where's of how this art came to be. So for years after that, as I was touring through the festival circuit, whenever I ran into somebody that I thought was going to have a really good story, I'd try and sit down and talk with them. And um, the results sometimes were mixed. Sometimes that conversation would be hours long. Um, you know, Zan Moore, Alien John, Nick Woolsey, all of them I sat with for such a long time it became really, really difficult to edit down their interviews at a certain point. Others, like Kate McCoy and Chris Kelly, um, I actually had a really, really difficult time getting them to talk about themselves for a variety of different reasons. Uh, those interviews didn't last nearly as long. And in every single case, the core question for me was, who has an interesting story to tell? You know, 
Alien John basically jumped from creating some of the most foundational tech poi frameworks that we all still use to this day to selling fiber whips or, you know, talking with Zan Moore who made a very, very clear choice about when he was going to disengage with the poi world that still to this day kind of blows my mind. And of course, I also wanted to tell the story that was the foundations of poi as we know it in a modern context. And then as I put those videos out, I started to notice something in the responses to them that made me a little uncomfortable. So like, in my mind, when I sat down to talk with somebody, again, it was because I thought that they had an interesting story to tell. But a lot of people that were watching those videos kind of thought of it as like, this is the moment where this person arrives, regardless of the fact that many of these people had careers that were years or even a decade longer than my own. And it became a thing that people started making demands of who I would interview. Now, here's one thing that's incredibly important to recognize about each and every one of those interviews. The only way that they were able to happen is if I ran into the person physically at an event. You know, our paths would have to cross. I would ask them, hey, can I have like an hour of your time to sit down and interview you? And, you know, we can then get uh, several minutes worth of B-roll for me to edit over it and everything. And, you know, there have been plenty of people that I have asked to do that over the years that just didn't have the time available. Um, one of my big regrets, of course, is that um, I tried and didn't manage to get John Alvarez to sit down with me for an interview at the last fire drums that I saw him at. You know, likewise, um, I'd love to do Liz Knights at some point, but we haven't been able to have our paths cross at such a time or such a place where she has the mental or physical spoons to do that. And so when people started making demands, all of a sudden it started to feel a little uncomfortable because not only was it, you know, I, I was doing the best I could in terms of the physical availability of both me and the people I was trying to talk to, but also there was another disturbing pattern that was kind of emerging from it. Namely, I couldn't help but notice that a lot of the people that were demanding more interviews were demanding interviews with people that were their friends or they themselves. Like, in their minds, they were waiting for me to come around and interview them. Which, like, that is completely not the purpose of that series. Like, literally, all of those interviews exist because I thought somebody had a really cool story to tell. Not because it was about saying, hey, you've arrived and now you're important. It was about having there be a teachable moment in all of those interviews. It was about having there be moments where people could listen to what these people had to say and take that as inspiration into their own lives. Were many of the people that I interviewed really important to the history of Poi? Absolutely. But you know what? That was never the point to me. The point to me was always what inspiration can other people take in terms of how they structure their career and their choices with the prop. You know, there were several people that I interviewed that are not considered super famous to this day. And the reason they got interviewed was just I thought they had an interesting story. So when people started demanding specific interviews and more to the point when they made it clear that they were waiting for their chance to be interviewed, that kind of killed a lot of my enthusiasm for the project because it just felt like people had missed the point. Um, they were waiting for their chance to speak instead of taking an opportunity to listen. And that really sucked. Now, that is not to say that I will never do another Profiles Employee interview. Um, I'm sure that I will, and I definitely have a list in my head of people that I would like to talk to. Off the top of my head, you know, getting Liz Nice to sit down for an, an interview, um, getting Ronan McLaughlin, uh, excuse me, McLaughlin, I keep mispronouncing that, Yuta Imamura, uh, Ivan Mel Gorbanov, or, uh, and I always mispronounce her name, uh, Lara Yo from, uh, from Russia would also be really fun to interview. Um, yeah, but at the same time, it's not a thing that I'm kind of going out of my way to do right now. And also, if I'm going to be real with you, I think that, like, for the most part, I did a pretty good job of documenting how we got to where we are in the poi world right now. You know, there's a reason that I haven't interviewed a lot of the up-and-comers in the past few years, and it's because we're still kind of operating within the paradigm that was created by the generation of tech spinners that more or less came of age between 2013 and 2015. 
you know, I got a lot of the classics in there. I'm still really proud of the fact that I got to interview both Zan Moore and Nick Woolsey in the span of a year. Um, but in terms of where Poi is at right now, you know, so much of the scene right now is still a byproduct of what it was back then. I don't think there's been a huge amount of innovation or people that have taken their careers in new and exciting directions since then. So it kind of seems like the documentation that I did back then is still kind of the paradigm that we're into this day. Although ironically enough, there is actually a lost Profiles in Poi interview. There's one that never got posted and uh, it's actually Tim Goddard interviewing me, um, which I just didn't trust myself to edit my own story. And at one point, Teddy Petrosky was going to, uh, to edit it for me, but just kind of fell through. So, <laughs> yeah, there is actually a missing interview, but I don't think it's the most important one by any means. Now, I do just want to throw in one bit of quick clarification before anybody comes into my comment section on this stuff. Is this me saying that there are not interesting stories out there in the poi world right now? Absolutely not. I am sure that there are. Um, in fact, I think that probably this period of poi history is going to be a particularly fruitful one for talking about how people have adapted to rapid changes. You know, I think that uh, the introduction of TikTok and the ways both in which vertical content formats as well as content discovery algorithms rather than following individual artists is going to result in a whole bunch of interesting changes to the flow arts world. But I also think we're in the early days of that and that it's probably going to take another couple years for us to really sort out what the impact of that has been on the scene. Um, and also, it, it has to be said in, in full honesty, like I am definitely, I don't, I definitely don't have the same kind of visibility on the scene that I did back in say 2013. I've been, I've been a bit of a homebody these past few years, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But in the meantime, if you're one of the old heads who's waiting on new profiles and poi interviews, I cannot tell you when that might happen. Um, I would have to travel in order to do such a thing, and I'm kind of averse to that right now. Um, but never say never. And if you're one of the newer followers of my channel that have no idea what Profiles in Poi is, I will go ahead and link to the playlist of Profiles in Poi interviews so you can go discover them and learn a bit of Poi history from the people that created it. I think like the biggest thing that I want to get across here is just, you know, I started doing those interviews because I found people that I thought had really interesting stories to tell and I wanted to inspire other people with them. So, um, yeah, I think that if you're looking for recognition, if you're looking to feel important, looking to feel as though you've arrived in the poi scene, um, look for other ways to do that than getting me to sit down and interview you. Because it's not just that that's a big drain on the time of the people that I sit down and talk to, it's also a big drain on my time. Those interviews take forever to edit. So I want to make sure that it is in service of telling a story that I'm really passionate about too, you know? Hey, did you get anything out of this video? If so, please make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible were it not for the kind support of all of these lovely people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. If you out there watching are not currently a supporter and you'd like to become one, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can do that at the link down in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching this video on YouTube. Um, you, there you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and even better, you'll be helping me out and supporting me in my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and helping people connect with their brains and their bodies as creative individuals. So. Go check that out, please and thank you. Thank you for joining me for this little walk and talk session. Um, I will go ahead and include a link to a playlist of other vlogs that I have done on topics such as this one. Uh, playlist down in the description as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube algorithm also thinks you'll like this top video here, so you might want to check that out as well. 
Um, make sure to get out and flow today, and I will see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.